Hello, my friends. It's time for Thought Shifting Thursday as I shift in my seat here. And um, I'm excited. So our title today is, let's see, what is it? Um, <laughs> the most important new thought self-help principle practice that gets you a life of freedom, joy, and fulfillment. Any guesses before you watch or right now? Um, if you watched last week, then you know what it is. So I'm not going to uh, build it up anymore. I'll just tell you. So it is self-love. This is the most important gift that we can offer ourselves. I'll give you a quick review and then I'm going to give you some added information uh, to what we talked about last week. And describe um, one of the most powerful exercises that, uh, that I've ever done with groups and individuals um, in workshops and, uh, and retreats and so on. And it's also in this book. And it's on the CD, but nobody has CD players anymore. So you can download it from my site as well, and I'll give you, um, I'll give you the information about that in a bit. <clears throat> so uh, the review is. Uh, let me start here. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you love yourself? Unconditionally, that is. I'm pretty amazed at how uh, the, the honest answers I get when I ask that to individuals. Um, had many people start at a two. I've had a few zeros. And if it's below 10, obviously there's room for improvement. If it's below a five, then it's the most important work play that one can do is to raise that number. And um, so uh, and one thing, one reason I wanted to continue the discussion today is I had a client uh, the same day, last Thursday, right after our... Um, uh, shortly after we did our video and uh, she said so how how do I love myself more I don't get it um, uh, I, I offered last week the affirmation um, I love myself no matter what because as I said the true test of self-love is not loving ourselves when we just some, did some really cool stuff the true test is can I love myself when I just hurt somebody that I the feelings of somebody I love when I just made a mistake that cost me, a, uh, you know, 20 grand. Um, when I just uh, found out that I've got a life-threatening illness. The true test of self-love is when I can love myself in those instances. When I've really, or when I've really messed up. Um, what, you know, that's a, one way of assessing um, that number, right, is when I do something that, when I make a really bad mistake, what do I hear in my head? Is it, you screwed up again, or you screwed up this time, or is it, um, it's okay, we'll recover from this, let's figure out a way. Um, I, I love you exactly as you are. I love myself no matter what. Uh, so my client said, but how? How do I love myself more? Because she didn't have a clue of that, and so, this is a little analogy I've used in the past is think about the person or sometimes works even better with pets because pets love us unconditionally, right? So think about the pet or animal um, or person if that's even more relevant for you that you have unconditional love for. Just close your eyes and think about ideally that most beloved pet and just feel your love for that creature, that being. Visualize that four-legged, if it's a four-legged, in your, in your mind. And now just transfer that love for that beloved individual to yourself. Can you love yourself unconditionally in the same way that you love that being. Hmm. Feel yourself, loving yourself unconditionally with that same energy, that same acceptance, that same appreciation, that same even adoration. So, um, I'm going to describe uh, a, an exercise that 
is the most powerful exercise and in and uh, there's a link um, in the description today to uh, me guiding you through the exercise um, that you can download from my site um, next week I'm going to actually guide I'm, I'm going to offer the guidance for that exercise it might be better um, for me to do it live on a video because um, you know, originally it was done on a CD, and so there's only so much time I had. I had several exercises on the CD, so so it's a little bit short, and you can like you can do it and pause to give yourself more time. Um, so if you're like after you hear the description, just gangbusters want to go do it, go ahead and do it. Um, but or if you want to wait till next week, we can do it together next week, or obviously you can watch it uh, later on. <clears throat> so. In this this uh, this exercise, uh, my voice will guide you back through a review of your life. So we'll start with like one week, just looking at your last week. Don't do it now because this is just a description of it. But again, you can go to the you can go to the site or you can go to uh, or you can wait until next week. So um, uh, so I'll guide you back. You'll look at the last week, the last month of of your life. Um, just not non-judgmentally just looking at your life and noticing what you notice the last year of your life and then the last five years and then go back in in five or if you're really really old like me then <laughs> old and wise let's say um, then you're gonna go back you know maybe in 10 year segments uh, whatever works for you and then you'll get back to you'll and, and you're just looking for what were the the, the important memories the peak experiences the challenging moments and as you go back you'll just notice are there themes that are developing hi Naomi on Instagram hi Karina <coughs> and um, you'll notice what what are the ex what are the um, peak moments and are there themes and um, what was it like in your early 20s when you're just embarking on your journey as adult back in your teens Back in your early teens, what was that transformational time like? Into your your youth, into your even infancies and in infancy, and even if you don't have cognitive recall, what was it like when you were three years old, one year old, one month old? What did you learn from your environment, from uh, from your parents, from your whoever was in your environment? And then back to your day, the the day of birth, what was that like experience for you, intuitively? What did you? What were your first impressions of life, coming into this world? And then back even further into the womb of your mother. What was it like? What did you learn from that environment? When you were part of your mother's body, her feelings, her her thoughts, her beliefs. Um, plane going overhead. That's what happens with live video. And. Um, and then back to the most important part, to the point of conscious conception. When you as a soul decided to come into this physical incarnation, why did you choose the parents that you chose? You know, and what, if, whether you, you're, if that's part of your belief system or not, just play with it. And, and if it was your belief system, what would that be like? What, just play with it. What, 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 why did you choose these parents, this environment, um, this period of time and so what did you want to learn from these experiences that you set up for yourself what did you want to teach what was your mission in coming here and um, and then you're gonna dialogue from that point of conscious conception from your soul self to your present-day self and tell yourself how well you think you've done with this with this job with this mission, with this intention, um, and and then, and most people, so you're going to dialogue. You're going to tell yourself how well you think you've done, and words of encouragement for moving forward from this point onward. And here's the final step. And most people, if they if they do it, um, not in a coaching session with me. If they do it in a workshop, or um, actually, if they do it in a in a coaching session or they just got the book and did it on CD um, they often won't take the final step which is to then sit down write a letter from your soul self to your present day self again telling yourself how well you think you've done with this journey and then um, 
you put the uh, you put the letter in an envelope and you give it to and and you self-address it put a stamp on it it's got to be a forever stamp <laughs> and uh, give it to a trusted friend who's going to put it in a safe place where they can see it often and then when it feels right drop it in the mail so that you at some point in the future will receive this letter from your soul um, and it always arrives at the absolute perfect time in life and if you can't think of someone to give it to um, send it to me 2593 Young Avenue Thousand Oaks California 91360 <laughs> 2593 Young Avenue Thousand Oaks California 91360 if you didn't get that play it back um, <clears throat> and I'll send it to you at the right time this is what I do with my clients uh, most often so let me tell you more about this now usually when we think about our life and how well we're doing we're comparing ourselves to others or to some kind of outside influence <clears throat> when we're assessing ourselves from that uh, first cause um, intention from the soul self's intention then a uh, hi Christina good to see you um, glad you're you're part of this so when we are assessing ourselves from that first intention of our soul then I, I have not found one and I've done this with thousands of people over the last uh, probably 30 years almost and I have not found one individual has not reported a higher degree of self-acceptance and self-love as a result of doing this exercise um, so I'll give you an example from a workshop I did this is probably about 15 17 years ago so <clears throat> in the workshop we did the exercise and a woman came out of it and she said you know I've been hearing for for many years that you know we choose our parents we choose our our life situation um, and I could never understand why I would choose such a high degree of abuse as a child and she said I get teary every time I tell this story she said, and, and I didn't even completely understand this because I didn't experience that kind of abuse, right? But she said, what I got from this exercise is, I'm getting chills as I say this, what I got from this exercise is that going through this abuse, going through all of the challenges I did as a child, taught me how to love myself and how to love others in a way that no other journey possibly could have. So for, for whatever reason, from her past life experience, for whatever reason, her soul decided that this is the lifetime to learn this in this particular way. And by the way, that is a, um, an indication of how we can choose really difficult life experiences in order to learn and grow from them. I'll give you another little analogy about that. Uh, Mike Dooley in his book, I've shared this before in these videos, Mike Dooley says that imagine that, um, and again, if you're not, if you don't believe in past lives, you, you've got to suspend, to, to get the value of this, of this uh, scenario, um, this hypothetical situation, you have to just um, put that on pause for a moment and just, just play with this. So imagine that you have, you've gone through many, many lifetimes with another soul that's been a close friend, like a, 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 a you know, a soulmate friend. And, and after many lifetimes together, sharing many experiences together, that particular soul goes on to a dark path uh, for several more lifetimes in order to learn a certain experience that could not be learned other, any other way. That soul... Uh, manifests uh, or becomes, um, you know, births into uh, several lifetimes as a child abuser. And that you recognize in between lifetimes that during this next lifetime, if I reincarnate as this, that soul's child, that at some point when as a person, through that personality, that soul is abusing me. Somehow, 
he or she will see, will look into my eyes, and that soul connection of many, many lifetimes together will be made, and that will be the thing to turn that person around. So the question then becomes, would you as a soul be willing to come into this an, an incarnation, choosing an abusive childhood in order to be a service to that soul? Now many people would say no, I, I would not. Um, I believe I would say yes. I believe I have said yes. And maybe you have before, and that's why you'll say no, because you've already done that, been there, done that. Um, but many people would say yes, right? But so you can see how that's, that's one way that someone um, would choose that kind of experience. You know, what I say in The Magic of the Soul, is in my book, is that it, this is where the um, uh, meditation comes from as well. Um, if there is violence, if there is oppression, if there is genocide, if there, if there are pandemics, um, if they're possible, then they must manifest in order for us to learn from them, in order to raise our consciousness, in order to raise our, our vibration as an expression of love in this world, because that's what we're all here to do. And everyone, in every single moment in time, is playing a role to raise the vibration of love on the planet. And so even the most, the greatest disasters, the greatest um, uh, things that we might lay, uh, uh, label as violent or evil are here. If nothing else, they are a call for greater love. We can all agree with that, right? So <clears throat> let me say one thing about the um, offering the letter to a trusted friend to put in the mailbox. Um, I had a, I was doing a, a class in spiritual psychology about, I don't know, 25 years ago probably. And uh, one of the students, <clears throat> uh, so I, I said, you know, you want to put the letter in a trust, in a safe place where you'll see it, where your friend will see it, and, and offer it um, at the perfect time. So uh, he said, to, I, like I saw him like 10 years after the, uh, the class had ended, and he said, you, you know, you remember that exercise we did in your class with the other, the letter and he said I was moving and I found this envelope with my partners because they exchanged you know letters as partners it's a sacred commitment by the way and I found it you know I, I had put it someplace and lost track of it ten years later and uh, I said oh my god I better put this in the, in the, in the mail so he put it in the mail and synchronistically he hadn't seen that classmate in ten years but a month later he saw her, met her someplace, and she said, Oh my God, I just got the letter. And in these entire 10 years, there was not a time that was more perfect than to receive it at that moment. So that's how it can work. But I always recommend don't take chances like that and you know, in, uh, uh, invite your friend to put it in a place where they'll see it on a regular basis. Or again, send it to me. Um, <clears throat> okay, what else do I want to say about this um, or about self-love? I think we're about to wrap it up for today. Um, maybe we'll do a quick meditation. As I said, next week... Um, oh, and if you missed last week's video, then the link in the description is to our, our YouTube, so you can find it there. Or, you know, just scroll down on my Facebook page or find it on in Instagram, and you can view that um, to give you a, uh, a deeper uh, understanding of... Um, the practices around loving ourselves unconditionally. Um, so that exercise is going to make a difference. And you know what? I might just continue doing a few more weeks on this because I'm, I'm just now thinking about another exercise, one of my favorite, which you can also find on my site uh, as a download uh, called the Rose Exercise. This exercise that uh, we're doing next week and it's also on my site is called Exercise for Loving Yourself. So let's just close our eyes. Um, and by the way, if you like this video and all the videos, please share, please, um, to those who think might benefit from it, and, and, uh, and like and uh, comment, because um, that just gives me great joy to go back. And later on tonight, I'll look at the comments and I'll respond. And, um, and I'll put this out there again every now and then. I'll, I'll say that... Uh, you know, if you haven't had one from me and, and, and would like a complimentary coaching session, um, just drop me a line or put something in the comments and we'll set up a time. 
Okay, so, <clears throat> close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. Mm. Just sink down into your heart. We're going to do a mini version of the end game of that exercise and just imagine that you are your infinite timeless soul self looking at your present day self. Offering encouragement, offering love, Just tell yourself how much you appreciate all the things that you've gone through in this journey, in this lifetime, and where you have landed as a result of this. I'll just let you continue on in this, in this meditation as long as you like. And I'll sign up for now. And, and again, tune in next week for the longer version. It's, it's uh, very, very powerful. So have a great uh, Thursday and rest of your week and weekend, and we will see you next week, my friends. Love to you.